to get into the Coalition for Sustainable Animal Agriculture in just a few minutes. I wanted to uh, first start, though, I know there's a lot of familiar faces uh, in the room, but for those of you that aren't f uh, familiar with the Center for Food Integrity, I want to spend just a few minutes kind of getting you grounded on what we are all about. The, uh, the Center was founded in 2007, and we really don't have a natural constituency. Our members don't come from one segment of production or one segment of, of people that, that serve agriculture or the food chain. But rather, our members represent every single segment uh, of the food industry, including farmers and ranchers, university professionals, food processors, retailers, restaurants, and food companies. So we really spent, you know, we're really spinning the gamut of those that are involved directly with food production, food research, and those that are delivering it directly to consumers, whether it's a supermarket or a restaurant entity. And those members uh, serve on a board of directors that helps us set direction, set policy that guides the center in its ongoing efforts. And we're, what we're really all about is implementing strategy to build consumer trust. And those three words will be very used often in this presentation, building consumer trust. And we do that by sharing accurate information, correcting misinformation when we see it out there, highlighting best practices throughout the food industry, and then engaging stakeholders to build consensus. And that's where we spend probably 80% of our time, is stakeholder engagement, bringing people to the table, talk about common issues, talk about opportunities, and, and getting resolutions to move forward. Um, and then, very importantly, we do, we're not a lobbying organization. Uh, we cannot lobby, and we don't advocate for individual companies or brands. So if a, a member sits on our board and, and, is a, and is a member of our organization and they have an issue, we can't go out there and just talk for them. Rather, we talk for our members in general and the food system. <coughs> but our mission is very simple, and it's to build consumer trust and confidence in today's food system. And the way we do that is by designing and developing models that fundamentally define and communicate trust. And our very first model that we, uh, that we developed was our consumer trust model. And that was really bringing the values part of communication into the equation. And we did that about four or five years ago. And it, uh, and it is really the basis of a lot of communication in food and agriculture today. Uh, we research consumer attitudes and new approaches to building trust. We have an annual consumer survey, which is quite extensive, where we go out and we test uh, how they feel about certain issues, messaging, and also programs that, if they saw that out there, uh, that would move the needle towards building trust in the food system. Again, we engage uh, stakeholders across the food system to work together to building trust. What we always like to see is continuous improvement, bringing all sides of the equation together and, build, uh, and, and go forward to build consumer trust. And we develop programs and messages that create better understanding of today's food system that results in enhanced consumer trust. Our vision is really to lead the public discussion to build trust in today's food system and facilitate that dialogue with the food system to create better alignment uh, and create better alignment with consumer uh, expectations. And this is really kind of how we're structured today. Um, we've, we started out being very animal agriculture oriented. We have an animal agriculture committee and separate animal ag agriculture products, uh, which are funded by the United Soybean Board that we started out with. But then to the left is really how we've progressed since 2007. We've got a couple of coalitions that are very, uh, very specific, Coalition for Sustainable Egg Supply. Our newest is the Coalition for Sustainable Animal Agriculture. And we've also just started a new initiative called New Conversation About Food which is a consumer-facing initiative to really get out there and change the conversation about food in today's media. And we've got uh, multiple online presences, and this kind of demonstrates the breadth of our, or the breadth of our, breadth of our organization. Uh, foodintegrity.org is our main uh, uh, website where you can find member information and, and information on, on everything we do. Engage at cfiengage.org is a farmer resource center where our farmer members uh, can, can use it to uh, pr uh, provide uh, uh, messages and programs that they can use within their local communities. Uh, bestfoodfacts.org is a consumer portal, and that really provides answers to common consumer questions about food. And what's important about that is that the answers that are on Best Food Facts are not answers from CFI or any of our members. What we use are credentialed experts, such as university researchers, uh, registered dietitian, nutritionist, 
those out there that are actively working to help us answer those questions. So we bring in a third-party, non-biased approach to it. And then FarmersFetus.org and Choose to Choose are two other consumer-facing uh, initiatives that we've got as well. Uh, FarmersFetus.org has a lot of uh, farm tours and a lot of uh, individual farmer stories on it. And Choose to Choose is all about choice. It's, it's really telling the story of we've got multiple ways to produce food out there, and that goes towards consumer choice. So that's kind of our, our online presence in case you wanted to look up uh, any information on the organization. But like I said, the Coalition for Sustainable Animal Agriculture is one of the newest initiatives we have. Uh, it was really uh, formalized in the fourth quarter of last year. And it came about because our members that are a little further towards the consumer side of the equation came to us and said, look, we really need your help in connecting with the entire food system on animal agriculture issues. We're getting a lot of questions from our customers, whether it be through uh, the, the meat counter personnel or through their websites or uh, to the restaurant manager, but consumers are asking a lot of questions. And what we really need to do is have a better understanding of these issues, and we need information that we can use with consumers to help answer it. We don't want you to answer it for our consumers. We want the information from you so we can uh, answer it for our consumers. So that was really the genesis of, of why the Coalition for Sustainable Animal Agriculture came together. And really, you know, what we started out with is, okay, let's define what sustainable animal agriculture is. And as we all know, animals are raised in systems. And there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of, a, a lot of uh, elements to these systems. Uh, not only on the production side, such as worker health and safety, animal health and well-being, but also on the delivery of food side with supply chain di dynamics, consumer attitudes, uh, food affordability, and eth ethics costs. And we all know that that works in a system, and that system has to be balanced in order for it to be sustainable. And what we've seen in the past is that when we change one part of that system, it throws everything out of balance. And a lot of times those changes are made without regard to the trade-offs to the other parts of the system. So what we like to say is that you know, this holistic view of animal agriculture takes all of this into account, and it all has to work in balance. And so the beliefs for the uh, Coalition for Sustainable Animal Agriculture is we believe sustainable animal agriculture is ethically grounded, scientifically verified, and economically viable. You have to have those three uh, legs of the stool, otherwise it's not sustainable. And it also requires a balanced evaluation of those many elements that go into it, uh, including food safety, nutrition, worker health and safety, environment, animal health, and food affordability in the context of evolving consumer demands. And we added that last sentence uh, at, per the request of our retail partners because I said, you know, look, it's not that the consumer's uh, always right. Often on these issues, they're, they're, they're not right a whole lot, but we still have those consumer demands that are, that are um, up upon us, so we've got to understand how all this works within the context of, of what our customers are telling us. In terms of our vision, we want to encourage sustainable animal agriculture by providing a forum where, the food, where food system stakeholders from every chain in the link can evaluate those various elements that contribute to sustainability, but more, enforce, more importantly, foster that dialogue, come together as a group uh, to promote continuous improvement that results in consumer trust. Our mission is to build trust in sustainable animal ag by encouraging stakeholders uh, across the food system, by engaging them in that balanced evaluation of the elements that contribute to sustainability. Again, bringing everybody to the table for dialogue that says, okay, let's, let's talk about sustainable animal agriculture and what we can all do to move forward. So to fulfill this mission, we've got a number of things that we, we have planned to do. Uh, we're going to work toward alignment between supply chain performance and customer expectations that builds consumer trust. We're going to constantly measure restaurant and retailer stakeholder attitudes on these issues related to, related to, to sustainable animal agriculture. So we can constantly see where those that are closest to consumers, uh, what their attitudes are on there so we know how to react to those. We're going to also measure evolving consumer attitudes on these issues and share those with the supply chain. And then we're going to provide a forum to, to promote continuous improvement through supply chain dialogue. We want to serve as a credible scientific resource for food system stakeholders, and we want to provide that consumer-friendly information on sustainable animal agriculture. Again, this goes back to our members asking us to help them take this very technical information and provide it to them in a way that they can share it 
with their consumers and so that they, uh, they understand the issues. And finally, we want to serve as a, cred a credible public voice on issues related to sustainable animal agriculture. So I think you can see in that, in that mission that we are very much in line with what you guys went through uh, last year in your, uh, in your symposium. And we're all kind of moving towards that same, that same goal of continuous improvement and fostering dialogue. And so there should, there, there's some, some very remarkable ways I think we can work together. Just in terms of our leadership, these are the, uh, the companies that came together uh, with us in terms of getting this off the ground. As you can see, these are very, uh, you know, very close to the customer. We've also got a couple of, uh, of their uh, associations that are represented as well in there. But to get started, they really wanted us to focus on two areas. One was the sustainable use of antibiotics. They saw that issue coming down the road at them. And also sustainable sow housing. Um, many of them have already made uh, decisions on sow housing and have already put a date out there on that. And as they followed the issues, you know, they put that on the table. We were like, you know, why do you want to? Why do you want to do that? This issue is, is is moving forward. And they said, yeah, but between now and those dates that are five, ten years out, we need to know what to do. So that's why sustainable cell housing is is on our uh, on our list. But in terms of the, our antibiotics uh, task force steering committee, these folks have met uh, for one call to get us organized, and we've got another call uh, coming up. But you can see who, uh, who's represented on the task force steering committee. And this is the initial group of folks that will help us kind of outline our strategic plan uh, going forward. And the desired outcomes for this task force um, are really to develop a better understanding of what is currently known about the use of antibiotics in animal agriculture, what additional information is needed, and then if, if there is a need to uh, do more research, engage channel partners to commission that research so we can fill in those gaps of information. We want to provide food chain participants with the information they need to make informed decisions about the responsible use of antibiotics in animal agriculture. Again, that, that informed decision goes uh, to, towards helping them understand the issue so that when we have a crisis or we have something that breaks, that they don't automatically make a snap decision, pull something from the shelf, and then have to reverse that decision a couple months down the road. We want to participate in the public discussion about antibiotics and continue to track consumer attitudes towards the issue. So our immediate action steps, and this came out of our last call, was really our, our retailers said, you know, look, what, what we need right now are just antibiotics 101 materials. Give us the basic information about this that we can use uh, when we get somebody that writes in through the website. If we get somebody that calls us over the phone uh, that we can share with our store managers that they can use with consumers. So with, uh, with the help of uh, some of our technical resources, including the Animal Health Institute, we put together a, uh, an infographic for use in social media, along with a backgrounder and an FAQ. And those are currently getting uh, vetted for approval right now, but those will go out uh, to our members here probably within the next week. Um, and then consistent with uh, NIAA, they want us to engage human health organizations. One of our uh, steering committee members on the phone said that was the holy grail of this issue, according to him, and that if we can engage them, we can make a lot of progress on this. Uh, they want us to continue to engage state veterinarian public health organizations. Um, and then also analyze and, and the existing research. And this, this really came from a lot of our technical folks saying that, you know, 80% of, of, of what's known about antibiotics already exists in the research. What we need is somebody to help us break it down and understand it and get it to the point where we can use it with our customers. We're planning an interactive website on antibiotic use. Uh, that, are, that, that will be made for retailers, not consumers, but a place that they can go and get further informed on the issue. And then our Best Food Facts uh, consumer portal, portals, we're uh, planning two different initiatives. Uh, in light of the FDA report that is coming out, we're going to do a series on residues versus resistance and provide some light on the difference uh, between uh, those two. And then uh, we're going to do a video series where we're going to pair up a, uh, a consumer with an expert on camera, uh, probably a mom uh, with children, along with an expert, and have that mom just ask questions off the top of her head about the antibiotic issue to, the, uh, to our experts and have them answer it. We've got a, a five-part series on uh, the use of GMOs that we did this exact same um, uh, format with, and it's working out really good for us. So opportunities, uh, 
in terms of going forward. Um, obviously, collaboration, sharing information, and other resources. You guys are moving down a lot of these these exact same uh, same tracks, and we really see the opportunity to to collaborate with NIAA as very valuable to uh, to, to advancing this issue. Uh, facilitate and form dialogue. Again, we've got you know retailers, restaurants, branded food companies that are already uh, uh, members of sustainable animal agriculture. We want to also add public and human health professionals uh, to that and then get to consumers through some various avenues as well. Uh, participate in the public discussion. I think together we can seek opportunities uh, to do that. And then also, between all these groups, we can facilitate consistency of messaging. And that's probably the most important thing on this issue is that no matter if it's NIAA, uh, CFI, one of the uh, species groups, we, if we're all consistent with our messaging, I think we can eliminate uh, consumer confusion that, that is out there. Um, and then task force leadership, we've got uh, groups that are already members of NIAA that are members of CFI, so we can have uh, NIAA participate on, on our task force and provide leadership uh, for what we do in the future.